All right. Uh, so for the next talk, uh, so this talk on uh, the complexity of finding S factors, unfortunately, the, the authors were not able to make it, but they've recruited uh, the local uh, arrangements chair to give this talk on behalf of them. I didn't realize this is also an option in general, but he uh, has worked on the mind. So thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about the complexity of finding S factors in uh, regular graphs. Um, the authors are uh, Sanjana Kolishetti, Lean Le, uh, Elia Volkovich, and Mihalis Yanakakis. Okay, so let me just uh, tell you what the outline of this talk is uh, going to be. Uh, we'll start with the motivation for the problem. Um, they'll, we'll talk about their model and uh, the known results. Uh, then we'll talk about their results. Uh, I'll just give an overview. And uh, there were also some proof details and I've uh, used some MacBook hacks to remove the parts of the slides which I didn't want to present. So they won't be presented. And uh, I'll conclude. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, in complexity theory, we are interested in uh, understanding easy problems versus hard problems. And uh, constraint satisfaction problem is a, a very general problem which can actually model many interesting problems that we study in complexity theory, is easy as well as hard. So what is a, a constraint satisfaction problem? It's a type of problem where one needs to satisfy multiple constraints on variables simultaneously. So what does this mean? Uh, for example, I can give you a set of linear constraints and I can ask you whether they are satisfiable, uh, can this uh, set of uh, linear constraints be satisfied. As we all know, this is an easy problem, which is an instance of constraint satisfaction problem. Um, on the other hand, you could have graph coloring like problem, where you are given a graph and you are asking does there exist a proper coloring for the vertices. And as we all know, this is a very hard problem. Uh, by hard, we mean NP hard. So a uh, constraint satisfaction problem could scale from problems in P all the way till problems that are in NP and uh, there are versions where maybe it's even harder than NP and so on. The constraint satisfaction problems that will be considered in this talk uh, are on Boolean domain and uh, they are stated in a slightly different language. So let me introduce some notation to just talk about the problem a little more carefully. Uh, a relation R is a constraint on the truth values of propositional variables xi. So any relation is a valid relation. You could say xi or yi or xi or negation yj. All of these are relations. Uh, let gamma be any fixed set of relations. So now I develop a vocabulary using these relations. So I allow myself a finite set of relations using which I can talk about instances generated from those. So let gamma be a fixed set of relations. A gamma instance is just a conjunction of constraints coming from the set of relations gamma. Uh, I mean, if you keep satisfiability at the back of your mind, you know what I'm talking about. Relations are just ors of variables and you're taking ands of those. So a constraint satisfaction problem over the alphabet gamma or over the set of relations gamma is a form of a decision problem where one needs to determine if a given gamma instance uh, phi is satisfiable or not. Okay, so it's uh, exactly what we understand just spoken in a slightly different language. And now uh, the name of the game is to uh, classify the complexity of uh, CSP of gamma. So let's uh, go through some quick examples. 3SAT uh, is just a formula over 3CNF uh, 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 CNF formula. And uh, those which are satisfiable form this set. So if I were to talk about them as constraint satisfaction problem over gamma, then the modeling would be that gamma will be this set of relations. Uh, you take relations where all three variables are non-negated or one variable is negated or two variables are negated or all the three variables are negated. And uh, um, now an instance 3sat is uh, maybe a specific instance like this and, and of these things. So um, there is a beautiful dichotomy known 
from some classical work of Schaefer, which says that there are properties that these gammas must satisfy, and if they do, the constraint satisfaction problem for those gammas is trivial, that is in P, and in all other cases, it is NP hard. So, uh, what it says is that it gives six cases. In those six cases, if gamma satisfy those six prop any of one one of these six properties, then CSP gamma is in P. In all other situations, it's NP hard. So it's a dichotomy result. So the six cases are very easy to state. Either when all things are set to zero, it evaluates to one. When all the variables are set to one, they it evaluates to one. So basically constant. RJs are uh, binary, the, each clause is just a binary clause uh, or it is a conjunction of uh, horn clauses. So, a horn clause is a clause where all but one variable is non-negated. So, it basically uh, is all but one variable is negative. All but one variable is negated. Uh, X implies Y or Z or W or something like this. So, when you write it as a, uh, is the other way around, right? You can say at most one, at most one positive literal. Yes. At most one positive literal or an implication like this, which essentially means you negate all the variables or uh, implication. Am I correct? Yeah, okay, thanks. And uh, dual horn clauses are uh, just when exactly at most one variable is uh, negated. Or um, the formula, uh, the, the relation is a, a fine form, which means that uh, you take uh, xi parity xj parity x, xk equals c, some 0, 1, whatever. In all these cases, it is in p, constant satisfaction problem of gamma is in p. And in all other cases, it's NP hard. So this is a classical result. And now uh, many works have uh, tried to generalize this result for some more notation. Uh, uh, the CSP gamma is called trivial if every instance in uh, CSP gamma is satisfiable. So examples of CSP gamma in P are the trivial cases. Uh, two sat, which is basically the third case that I mentioned. Uh, NP hard are three sat, not all equal three sat, uh, one in three sat, etc. So you go to any gamma other than the one that I listed, it becomes NP hard. Just for the sake of familiarity, this slide has been introduced. Uh, in this particular paper, they consider something called as CSP k gamma, where k stands for the number of times a certain variable appears in this formula. So, uh, read k formulas. A variable is read k if it appears at most k times in a formula. A read k formula is a gamma instance where all variables are read k. CSP gamma k is a specialization of CSP gamma to the case where the gamma instance is a read k formula. And uh, more specifically, this talk uh, will concern, uh, will be about CSP 2 gamma. So it is not very difficult to see that read 1's formulas are uh, trivial because, uh, I mean, are easy to solve uh, because you just fix a variable to the appropriate value and move on. It never appears again. Read 3 or more uh, is equivalent to unbounded. Um, I think the reduction is not that difficult, but I do not know it offhand. Uh, read twice is where apparently uh, the whole discussion uh, is for a while. And uh, so this paper talks about read twice. So Schaefer's uh, theorem does not immediately generalize for read k uh, settings. And that again is not very difficult to see. Uh, we can see it quite easily maybe. Uh, so again, uh, these are uh, using some older results. So uh, CSP2 1 in 3 sat. Okay, so 1 in 3 sat, I actually I should have uh, spent a little more time on it on the previous slide. 1 in 3 sat means uh, 1 out of the 3 gets set to 1 in a, any clause. Are these literals or are these variables? 
uh, they are literals. So, CSP2 1 and 3 sat. Now, this instance actually can be modeled as uh, uh, solving the following question Does there exist a perfect matching in a three regular graph? Yeah, it is not very difficult to see because you will put clauses on one side and variables on the other and uh, some sort of a graph there. I do not know how to do it, I tried. Uh, <laughs> I do not know how to do this, but uh, anyway, if it reduces, if you believe that it reduces to this problem, then uh, it is solvable in P is known from a classical work. Uh, CSP2 not all equal 3 sat. So, again, it is a 3 sat instance where a valid satisfying assignment does not assign the same value to all 3 literals in any clause, not all equal 3 sat is trivial since every three regular graph has a, so okay, it reduces to finding a slightly general uh, graph structure than a matching. It is called a 1, 2 factor and computing a 1, 2 factor in a three regular graph is what the problem reduces to and that again is known to be easy. Yes. So, all that we are saying with this is, so the Schaeffer's uh, categorization put problems in P and NP. Right. Once you restrict to CSP2, some more NP hard problems come to so Exactly. Yeah. So, even if gamma does not have those six properties, uh, even then the problem has become trivial. Yes. So, like I know what is one factor, like it is a matching in the graphics, expanding graphs of expand sub graph with a degree equals Yeah. So, like what is one in this factor? Is it either one or two? Good question. Uh, the vertex is degree 1 or 2 is a 1 to 5. Okay, great. I thought somebody in the audience will know. Gender is <laughs> Okay. A focus taken by uh, an earlier paper of Istrate was to consider the set gamma that consists of symmetric relations. And uh, what is a symmetric relation? It just depends on the Hamming weight of uh, the input. So, the relation evaluates to 1 as far as the Hamming weight falls into some class of numbers. So, for example, majority relation is a symmetric relation because it just depends on the number of 1s in it, etc. So, uh, not equal is a binary relation and the spectrum of that is just 1. That means either one of the variable is set to 1 and another to 0 or vice versa. Spectrum of a relation is the valid values that it can take where it evaluates to 1. So, in the case of not equal, for not equal to evaluate to 1, the bits better be set not equally, in which case the Hamming weight of the input has to be 1. Similarly, equal to k on a, as a k array relation, the spectrum is 0 or k, or either all bits are set to 0 or all bits are set to 1. Not all equal 3 sat is a ternary relation where, uh, so okay, let me not do these examples. I think the uh, uh, definitions are clear on this slide. So, uh, at this point, we I could have really stated the entire result, but I have to connect uh, this talk to the other part of the title, which is S factors. So, uh, let me do that and then I will be ready to state the results. So, every read twice formula can be converted into the one where it is exactly twice instance. So, every variable not just appears at most twice, but exactly twice. And when you do that, it can also be converted into a graph instance. And this graph instance is nothing uh, very uh, different from the one I already spoke about, where variables are on one side and clauses on the other. An S factor. So, the definition that was being asked has uh, come up now. I can uh, define it more carefully here. So, uh, we say a graph G has an S factor if there exists a spanning subgraph inside that graph, where for every vertex V, the degree of V comes from this set. So, a 1, 2 factor, uh, now maybe the definition is slightly clear. Uh, the notation was different, it sh probably should have been curly braces 1, 2 factor. Yeah. And uh, now here is the reduction from uh, CSP gamma k problem to the S factor problem. 
the two main characters of this story so far. Let R be any KRE relation. The complexity of solving CSP 2 R is the same as the complexity of finding an S factor in a K regular graph where S equals uh, the spectrum of R. So, KRE relation converts to um, KRE graph. So, maybe what I said about getting a graph instance, I may not be absolutely correct there. So, the graph instance that they are talking about in the first lemma is not the one I mentioned. It is something else, but I do not know what it is, unfortunately. Uh, the KRE relation might be explained as a relation to the vertex set to its K neighbors. So, everything has K. So, I, I don't know, I don't want to say uh, more than this. But uh, let us believe this observation that the CSP problem reduces to finding an S factor problem in a specific graph. So, if you are able to solve the problem uh, efficiently in certain cases, it will give you some information about how hard the CSP2 instance is in those cases. So, that is the main uh, important theme for this. So, just to be clear, here you are only looking at gamma which contain a single relation. Yes, yes, yes. So, that will come up. Uh, Single, single symmetric, yes. So, the, if, when I state the result, uh, I will mention all the assumptions that have been made so far. Uh, and as uh, Srikant was pointing out, uh, the notation will change slightly and we will not keep on putting these curly braces if it is understood that gamma only consists of one relation. So, actually we are uh, talking about quite a uh, restricted case, but that itself is surprising given the known results in the area. Okay, so, now stating the results, this uh, one more slide before I can state the results. The high level goal is to ca classify CSP2 gamma as per the choice of gamma. So, this would be the highest possible goal that we want to achieve. However, um, so ideally we would like the read twice dichotomy version of the Schaeffer's theorem. So, this would be a great uh, uh, achievement in this uh, line of work. However, we are still very far away from uh, any such classification and when we are stuck over the years uh, at a point, it is a good idea to look at some uh, restrictions I guess. So, uh, to narrow the scope, uh, gamma consists only of symmetric relations and as Meena was saying, um, just a single symmetric relation. Okay, so, that is the setup we are in and here uh, also uh, the result is not a complete classification, but uh, some sort of a conditional classification which I can now state. Okay, so, I will state the result in two slides. The first slide will talk about when the relation has even parity. So, let R be any symmetric relation and uh, let it have even parity say 2L. Uh, CSP 2 R is in polynomial. So, this is a complete characterization. In the even case, they uh, obtain a complete characterization when gamma is symmetric and a singleton. Either uh, there is some even number in the spectrum of the relation. In this case, it is easy or L which is the halfway point of the arity of uh, the relation that appears in the spectrum. In this case also they have a polynomial time algorithm. If not the midpoint, but L minus 1 and L plus 1 are in the set, they uh, if it is a subset of the spectrum, uh, even in that case it is a polynomial, they have a polynomial time algorithm. If it is a zebra, where uh, zebra is basically take any interval a, b and only pick out every alternate entry from there. So, that is called a zebra. And if uh, the spectrum itself is a zebra, uh, in that case also they have a polynomial time uh, running time. In all other cases, it is NP hard. So, for even arity, they have a full characterization. As I said, zebra is basically um, just uh, a set S is said to be a zebra if it consists of the interval A, B while only alternate element is in the set. Okay, so, I have uh, told you one part of the result. This is, is this re, uh, statement of the result clear? Yeah? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no no. The total number of variables in your formula could be very large, right? Every every clause. Uh, if you think about uh, satisfiability, say. <laughs> correct. Correct. For for example, it's uh, the relation is x or y or z bar. Or something. Four because x, uh, yeah, x y. Then it's a singleton, for instance. But I think uh, satisfiability. If there is no, yeah, yeah, that is still a valid instance. Correct. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, if it is odd arity relation, they don't have a complete characterization, and there is a uh, slightly technical caveat. But let's let me state the result as if there is no caveat first. So, uh, if that caveat wasn't there, we would have a complete answer. So, let me state it in that form first. R is a symmetric 2L plus 1 arity relation. Uh, then CSP 2R is in P in the following two cases. Either it's just trivial. Or it's a zebra. The spe the spectrum of the relation is a zebra. Okay, and in all other cases, it is NP hard. Unfortunately, uh, this is not quite the full picture, but it they also require that the relation is not always false. So this is an added assumption they have to make, and if one could get rid of this assumption. Uh, Maybe the question would be solved for CSP2 gamma uh, with singleton relation and symmetry. So, if R is constantly false, uh, then doesn't that mean that CSP2 R is trivial? I'll just give you one example where it is constantly false uh, or not is unclear, and therefore that case is not settled by this, for instance. So, let me just give you the second bullet on this same page. Uh, and then we'll see whether I understood what they are saying. Uh, it is currently an open conjecture whether all five regular graphs have a one-four factor or not. Okay, and this finding. So suppose I asked you uh, to solve this problem. This is like asking you, can you give a CSP two? Uh, can corresponds to finding whether. All CSP two R are satisfiable or not? So, for a relation, if all instances are satisfiable, that is what I mean by uh, the red part I had written on the previous slide. But doesn't that mean that if CSP two R is trivial? If it, if it, if it, trivial means I think that. Um, so there is always a satisfying. a satisfying assignment. Whereas this means that the problem is uh, just always true. So there is a slight distinction. In fact, this red part is added by me using my Mac, and uh, I was not clear looking at the slides why don't they have a full characterization, uh, and I was not able to make sense of this bottom comment, and I didn't find the time to write to them in the meanwhile. So uh, that's a problem. But uh, uh, from looking at the paper, it was clear that that there is a caveat in the given statement, and that relates to this example at the bottom of the slide. Yeah. Correct. 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 So. That is what the second. Yeah. So uh, the statement is this, and then uh, uh, basically whether a certain instance is trivial or not is not always easy to see. And if we can say that for all instances that okay uh, triviality is easy to check, then uh, this will be a full characterization. And uh, the statement. Triviality will not have to check whether it is trivial or it is not. Yeah. So it's not something that we check on an instance. It's just that in the dichotomy, there is a dichotomy, but we don't know what it is. I don't know. There is R. I don't know whether it goes on this side or this side. So looking at an R, whether it is trivial or not, is not easy to tell. Mm, that is the same thing, right? Uh, then what no, I said. Because normally an instance, you are you are not given R. R is fixed, and you are given an instance, and you are. Just okay. Okay. Yeah. Correct. 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 You are absolutely right. Yeah. That's right. 
So the, this is where the status is now and uh, I have described the result. I think I am just going to wrap up now. So uh, let me summarize. Uh, they have given a complete classification for CSP2 gamma when gamma consists of a single even arity relation. Unfortunately, it is not a classification uh, if uh, gamma has odd arity. Uh, it would be a classification as Meena was saying if one could tell if uh, the instance was uh, trivial or not. And uh, actually most of their paper actually talks only about not so much about CSP2 but about actually these S factors and finding them. All the proofs go via uh, from what I could understand uh, very superficially via solving problems about S factors. So the questions they ask are also kind of related to the S factors. Is it possible to identify for which set S an S factor is always guaranteed to exist? This will resolve the question that was raised on the previous slide. Is there a set gamma that does not? Um, so in one of the proofs they use this equal, equal 3 instance to push a certain case and therefore the second question comes from there. And of course the most neat question to ask at this point would be what if gamma is not a singleton but symmetric but consisting of multiple uh, relations. Can we say anything about it? So uh, yeah with that.